Hey guys, welcome back to Rule the World. Me and Spooky Steve have been working our way through Thorncraft, as you no doubt know. Now, the one thing that was getting in our way was the fact that the, the tower that we've been doing our Thorncraft in isn't very big. We've kind of run out of space. And it all came to a head last episode when we realized we didn't have enough room to put in our crucible. So this episode, what we're doing is we're going to be expanding Steve's tower. We're going to make this a really beautiful tribute to Thorncraft. It's going to be a nice tall reaching tower that's going to give us plenty of space to do all of the Thorncrafting we need to. Now as you can see behind we've got a load of custom arcane stone blocks that we've prepared. So let's jump in game and I'll show you exactly how we make these and what they look like in closer detail. Okay, as you can see uh, me and Steve have prepared some arcane stone which is a really kind of cool decorative block that you can make with Thorncraft and it's a great idea I think to uh, to plop this around the Tower of Steve to decorate the place and hey if you look the symbol on the middle there the Thorncraft symbol is also on the back of Steve's jacket that's really cool Steve you're a really fashionable Thorncraft dude I give you a compliment Steve you're supposed to, you're supposed to say thank you well it's the symbol of a Thaumaturge not so much I guess I suppose it's not so much fashion but a uniform of sorts. Well, all right, I'm going to show you guys how you make arcane stone. It's pretty simple, and we're going to need a couple of things from uh, from here. So let me just clear my search bar, and uh, we're going to need some stone. You need some smooth stone. You also need some thorncraft shards. So we're going to grab some entropy shards because we've got loads of them. Why not? Right. So the way you make it is quite simple. You go into your arcane work table. You put the shard in the middle of the bench, you wrap the stone around the edge, and now the missing piece of the puzzle is a little bit of vis or v. I think it's pronounced v, but it's spelt vis. So I might just call it vis for the time being. And there you go, you get arcane stone blocks. Now these look pretty basic at the moment, but it's when you combine them with a chisel that things get really interesting. So check this out, if you put it in here, Look at all these cool kinds of blocks we can have. Arcane Nasty Nazca Lines, Fine Thaumaturge Emblem, Cracked Rock Leaking Eldritch Glow. So we've got some of these around here. This is the Cracked Rock Leaking Eldritch Glow. Well, that's a real tongue twister. We've got uh, Brains, which is loads of brains trapped inside some glass kind of rock. Looks really cool, actually. Might use that later. We've got some in Fernly arcane, arcane stone blocks, which is basically just like a, a, a pretty cool kind of pattern with that connected textures feel. We've got the uh, the fine Thaumaturge's emblem, which is again the logo on the back of Steve's jacket. And that's pretty cool. I think we can decorate the tower with that. And also some single blocks down here, like a temporal conduit. Uh, there's some glowing symbols and also these glowing moons. Oh, and of course, not forgetting the nasty Nazca lines. Now, was there anything else here? There's some stuff that we haven't covered, like um, stone bricks, arcane stone bricks, arcane stone blocks. But what we're going to do is we're going to make... Well, I think I might make... Uh, I'll ma oh, whoops. I might... Oh, wait. How do you make one at a time? Can you make one at a time? You must be able to. Do I hold shift? Oh, no, I guess not. I guess you just put one block in at a time. So what you can do is, you can use these to make whatever you want, basically. They're nice decorative blocks. I'm not sure if they have a Thorncraft application yet, like if you need them to make anything, but they're certainly a very cool building material for you to build stuff out of. And here's, here's another thing that we didn't build with it. This looks pretty cool, actually. It's like a darker kind of brick. Oh, so the main stone and bricks are used later, Steve is saying. That's pretty cool. So we're just going to dig that up. And what we're going to do is we're going to get to building it right now. We're going to get to building the Tower of Steve. I've been looking forward to building the Thorncraft Tower for a while because anything that's kind of medieval and arcane and kind of like, you know, gothic kind of tower with magic added is something that's really cool. It kind of means you can build a conventional medieval tower, but you can also build, you know, some, some magical kind of flourishes to it that really set it off and make it look a bit special. So let's jump in and get building. Right, so it's time to build the Tower of Steve. He's just a lich that we've enslaved, and I know he's an evil monster that would rather be out eating babies if we hadn't captured him. But he still needs a roof above his head. And more importantly, we need a place to conduct all of our Thorncraft operations. 
One of my favorite things to build though are bridges. And I set about constructing a nice old fashioned cobbly stony kind of arch bridge over the river here. And I've used a central pillar in the middle for support. I kept it relatively simple. I was going for an almost gothic look here, which is why I've used these darker grey bricks and kind of stone textures. And to stick with that theme, I've used iron bars as decoration. Now, you might be wondering why the iron bars look a bit different, and that's because we've used the chisel we have to make our iron bars look a bit different and a bit special. We've gone for a peculiar design though. It kind of looks like a heart that we've got in the middle of the tower here. But, uh, but sure, I think it looks cool anyway. And with the bridge complete, it was time to hit the main tower. I'm really happy with how the bridge turned out though. I wanted to again keep the gothic theme we started with the bridge. We need a huge area to hold jars and take care of some other Thorncraft stuff later. But first I just wanted to build up the levels of the tower. I wanted the first two floors to be a place for us to just do the basic Thorncraft stuff in. And then I wanted the middle of the tower to be suspended by a double helix that was going to have two different liquids in the middle. And it was then that I had an awesome idea. Why not make the tower into a kind of skeleton kind of thing and have the core be the spine of like a skeleton? I could build a giant skull on top as well and have the double helix of liquid be almost like the blood and veins of the tower, the flowing lifeblood. I'm going to use ladders for this build to get up and down because stairs require a lot of extra room and ladders will free up a lot of space for us. Now the skull took a long time to build. It's actually really, really tough to sculpt in Minecraft. You have very few blocks and even the smallest change can radically or drastically change what the end product looks like. But once the skull was finished, I could turn the glass helix into a kind of spine looking structure and I've used ender goo and blood as the liquids that flow down the helix. So that's a purple and a red, just like some spooky kind of veins. And I've built the side tower next to it. Now this is gonna be the large area that Steve told me we were gonna need later on, so I'm not sure what's going to go there yet, but I wanted to make sure I had a nice, pretty, decently structurally sound area connected to the tower that had a lot of space for us to do our Thorncraft stuff. And there it is, the finished build. I'm really, really happy with how all this has turned out. It's going to be a really, really awesome place for me to jump in and explore Thorncraft in, and I hope Steve is happy with the build too. Right, so we finally completed the Tower of Steve. And it's looking pretty good. We've got like the awkward skull at the top. He's kind of looking left. It's not my it's not my finest build, but you can see his brain spilling out over the top. And I've got to say, Steve, that's pretty much a spitting image of you right there. He's got purple eyes, a white face, a toothy grin. Because <laughs> he's got no lips, so he can't exactly, you know, hide that. Right, so basically, Steve, what do you think of this tower? Do you think this is an adequate space for you to get into Thorncraft, for you to start delving into the dark arts? Is this going to suit your uh, your needs? Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind, Steve. One of the things that Steve said, of course, is that we'll need a big, flat, open space to do something to do something with uh, infusions, I think he said. And so we've got this big flat area here. There's also a platform underneath it that we can access through the tower. And there's four levels. This level it hasn't got much room because it's got the spine, obviously, of the skeleton. But we could put stuff up here, certainly, maybe like some of the gear or armor that we create in Thorncraft. And then the top level has quite a bit of room, actually. Even though there's lots of glass up here, there's a fair amount of room if we want to do anything else up here as well. But uh, definitely not enough room for Thorncraft bees, I don't think. So, okay, Steve, I've got the nitre now. Uh, what did you say we were going to do uh, in terms of the crucible? Because I know what the crucible is. It's like a big cauldron. It's where you put all your magical gloop. And it's also where all the taint comes from. So how do I make a crucible? What's, 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 the, what's the deal here? 
Not the only source. No, no, I know. There's also um, forests and, and goo and tentacles. And also certain Asian females spread it as well. Basically, you whack a cauldron with your wand. Okay, right. Well, I got a cauldron. No sweat. That's an easy, easy thing to put down. You need a heat source underneath it. Okay, and that's what we got the night ore for, right? If I just dig this plank away, it's a bit dark in here. Actually, might put some. I've already got some candles down, but we could use some more torches in here, maybe. Actually, the uh, the, the 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 night ore might create a heat, create a light source as well. Is this an okay place to put the cauldron? Then, like right in the middle, and some water in it. So maybe something for water, like a well. What do you mean? We need water in the cauldron. Okay, well we can make like an infinite source of water over here, uh, by the by, by the wall over here, in the crucible. Okay, so if I use the night, what do I, what can, how does nitre work? Can I just use it on the wood and it won't set any wood on fire? Wow. Okay. Wow. This stuff's pretty amazing. If you start a fire, Steve, I'm going to be very upset. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's not even like a fire. It's it's like um, like a torch, like a Thorncraft torch. It's interesting, and if I put the cauldron on top, it's a magical heat source. And now I whack it with my wand. Where's my, where's my, where's my wand? Where did I put my, my magic wand? That's a builder's wand. Oh, right, of course I left it in the table to make the, uh, make the things. There it is, you can see it on top there if I just take that off goes away. All right. So now we whack the cauldron with our wand and it'll become a crucible. Let's do this. Bam. Oh, the logo changes from Sfax to Thorm Sfax or Thorncraft. Right. Sweet. And it says it's a crucible now and there's a cool sound to make you know that that's what you're doing. Right. So I'm just going to dig away at this. Oops. It's very quick. Uh, and I'm going to get some more arcane stone blocks, actually. I'm going to need a few more of these. Make a well? Seriously? What do you mean, like, a well? Like, I'm, I'm typing in well, and there's nothing I can craft that says well, apart from, well, a brick well from Pam's Harvest Craft. Is that what you mean? Like a brick well from, from Harvest Craft? Wow. Okay, cool. Sure, it looks pretty good, cool as well, actually. I never knew these existed. So are these like a one-block infinite water source? Because that's genius. I'm going to need some red bricks and some iron ingots. Well, okay, I'm going to fly off and get those. Put down a well. Right, so let's see. I've got 20 bricks. I'm not going to steal a, a, a well from, from Berim. He built that himself. All right. You're a, you're a real thief, Steve. Keep your hands off other people's wells. We're gonna we're gonna use what kind of stuff can you use to make a well anyway? Iron looks pleasant. In fact, they they look the same. In fact, they got the same item ID, so they are exactly the same thing. Okay, well let's just put this like that and that like that, and bam, a brick well. Sweet. Now put the iron back. There we go. Oh, and don't forget a bucket, right? Of course, to fill the well up. Oh, I can make one. I might as well. There we go. I put the iron back in the barrel. Fill this up with water. I'll just grab some from here. There we go. And this is a really good idea. So previously in this mod pack, I've always been making like infinite water sources of uh, two by two or even three by three or three by two. But I didn't know that you could use a well to just make this infinite. This is this is this would be great for Britannia actually to put right next to an apothecary, a petal apothecary. So we're going to put we're still going to put the um, the well over here in the corner, I think, because it matches the stone brick very well. It's different, slightly different color, but it still looks pretty good. Look at that; it's almost almost the same texture actually. And now, oh, has it already got water in it? Oh no, it, it does already have water in it, so I don't need to. There we go. Oh, where's the bucket gone? It's vanished. Oh no, it goes in my pack. Right, there we go. Alright, sweet. So we have a crucible full of water. It's bubbling away. So what, are we making tea or are we making magic? After a moment, the water boils. 
So what do we do with the crucible? We've got a crucible. We can undertake thormic alchemy. Oh right, sweet. But that's that that's that's a bit complex, Steve. We spent this episode building a tower. We put down the crucible, and we've got the night or now. So what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna call it there. I think we've got a lot done though. We've got a well down in here as well, so we've got an infinite source of water that only takes up one block. Unfortunately, it's not animated, so it does look a bit a bit weird. <laughs> but it's still it's still a really good way of uh, of storing an infinite water source inside your house if you need it, where you need it. And you don't need four blocks to do it. So I've been Stjin, and this has been, again, Rule the World. We built the Tower of Steve, and I hope you'll agree, it's a pretty cool structure. Not quite as cool as Eldrifin's Tower, it certainly didn't take as long, but uh, it's a bit of a more simple setup, because Steve's only with us to do alchemy and, uh, and thorncraft, and once he's gone, we can just get rid of all this stuff, and then bury his bones somewhere, and uh, I'm just kidding, Steve, we're not gonna kill you. Uh, we're not gonna kill you, I'm, yeah, it's just a joke. Like jokes, don't you, Steve? Steve? Like jokes? Good. Yeah, good. Good. Alright, well, bye, guys!